Hi there, everyone. I'm Sam Valenti. Welcome back to another episode of Backlot Pass. You might remember today's guest from 1987's Tough Guys Don't Dance, and she also had a very, very memorable role on the legendary sitcom Full House, and she's done so, so, so much more, the great Deborah Stipe. Deborah, it is such an honor to be talking with you today. Thank you so much, Sam. I'm delighted to be here. I'm excited to have this conversation with you. Well, hey, well, hey I am super excited as well. So so kind of first off, uh, I, I kind of want to get into your background and stuff, how you got into acting. Uh, I saw that you grew up in Chicago, which is awesome because I love Chicago, such a beautiful city. So what was life like kind of growing up around there and stuff? I love Chicago and it was really a great place to grow up. I grew up in a suburb of Chicago. I had four sisters, still do, four sisters and two brothers. And um, honestly, I think that one of the um, blessings I had was one, I had super supportive parents that were very musically inclined, uh, particularly my dad. Um, but then I just had like this full cast right at hand, I always say, that I would always sort of draft my brothers and sisters to do skits with me and little programs for the neighbors for holidays. So it was a very sort of creative uh, environment for me growing up. Um, but Chicago was a great city and I fully accessed it, particularly when I was in uh, college. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Did you, did you, did you ever like, like go to, go to any, any of like the sports events, like Cubs games and whatnot? Oh yes, oh yeah. My dad was a huge Cubs fan. Uh, and so he would drag me and my sister uh, to games and we just loved the whole environment. We weren't like super into the game per se, but uh, he was, and it was just such a, a great, you know, great atmosphere. Chicago is, has so much spirit to it. Um, so much, you know, it's a walking city. There's so much I love about it. Yeah, absolutely. It's a wonderful, wonderful city indeed. Uh, and then, then how did you just kind of, you know, get interested in going into acting? You, you know, when did, when did the acting bug uh, hit you? <laughs> Well, like I said, I really loved uh, just making up stories and creating these little shows with my sisters and my and my brothers. Um, and so it was just like kind of who I was in the context of my family. And um, even with a couple neighbor girls, we would put on little shows. Uh, so when I was in middle school, uh, I was in a speech class and the gal that, that taught the teacher that taught her speech class, she was also directing the plays. So my first play was Midsummer Night's Dream in middle school. I was uh, Mustard Seed, the fairy. Um, but that was like really my first play. Um, but then even at the church, I was doing, like we would do these like little productions at the church. So I loved doing those. So once I got to high school, um, I really consistently started doing the plays and the musicals in our high school program. It was a public high school, but we had amazing teachers, great mentors, very, very fortunate. Uh, to be at the high school that I went to. So really was cultivated in high school. I really, it became, you know, clear that that was what I wanted to do. I'm I'm such a fan of like experimenting as you kind of figure out what you're meant to do in life. Um, so when I was in middle school, I remember there was a, there was a girl named Ramona Peterson. She was super good on the uh, playground. You know, she'd be doing these back handsprings now. And I was watching the Olympics and Nadia Comaneci was amazing. And I was like, oh, that'd be so cool to be a gymnast. But then I went to this church conference and I competed and I sang this song, Psalm 23, and I got a standing ovation at the end of the song. And I remember thinking, okay, maybe maybe gymnastics is not my thing at all. Maybe uh, this singing has potential. And um, again, doing plays. I didn't make my first play in high school, but I remember our drama teacher pulling me aside and he said, keep going. Uh, don't give up and uh, come back. I think you've got something. And um, yeah, it was just, it was, it became my thing. It became clear that that was going to be my journey. Oh, well, well, well that's awesome. And, 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 and let me just say that I'm really glad that you kept going. Oh, so, thank so. Thank you. And then, and so, so from there, you, you know, you're in high school and stuff. How did you decide on going to a Northwestern, how did you make that decision to go there for college? Well, you know, like I said, in high school, I'm doing musicals and I'm doing plays and I really loved both. And I didn't want to sacrifice one for the other. And I knew that at the college level, um, that a music major is going to study opera. 
but I wasn't hundred percent convinced that like opera was my lane. Um, and I remember like when I first started taking voice lessons, I told my high school choir teacher, um, I will take voice lessons, but I don't want to be an opera singer. I don't want to sound like an opera singer. And then sure enough, you know, you know, you know, it happened. It happened, Sam, um, <laughs> that the opera thing just sort of uh, became part of my wheelhouse. Um, I'm sorry if I scared you with that high C. Uh, but so I chose Northwestern because it offered me both. Right. So I had um, I had an audition for Indiana University, which had an amazing opera department. And then the Eastman School of Music in Buffalo, New York. And that was going to be like a conservatory. So that would be no academics, which I kind of liked, uh, but only opera, only classical music, whereas Northwestern afforded me both. They had an amazing music program, but I also knew they had a great uh, drama program. Um, and two of my sisters had gone there. And I knew Chicago was close by, so I thought, that's the one. And I'm so glad, I'm so glad that that's where I landed. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Northwestern is a great, great school. Uh, I, I've been th there to, to Evanston once, and I saw a basketball game there for the Did Wildcats. You? And it's, uh, yeah, it, it's beautiful there. It is such a beautiful campus. It is. Now, were you there? Uh, what time of year were you there? <laughs> uh, let's see. This is, so this was, yeah, this was over like, uh, like what? I guess my winter break a couple of years back. So, yeah, it was, it was pretty cool. It was chilly, yes. When there by the lake, it's just freezing. But we put up with it. Yeah, absolutely. What? Yeah. So what were you like some of your you know fondest memories you know that you had at Northwestern you know what was your overall experience like being at the university and in in the program that uh, you were in? Gosh, um, you know we had really developed a, a close knit uh, group of friends in the theater department and the musicals. Um, Northwestern put on a big show called Wam You, which uh, was originally written by students and it was a huge spectacle of a show it was like a variety show and I grew up loving Carol Burnett so that genre was like really fun uh for me um and so I just remember as a freshman making the show feeling uh just really flattered to have made the show and the people that I got to work with were so extraordinary so now you know we're talking to people like Craig Bierko and uh, Steve Stark who has gone on to be an amazing producer and Michelle Nicastro who was on Broadway in Les Mis who is sadly no longer with us, but um, just some really extraordinary classmates, actor George Newburn. So Eric Gilliland, writer for uh, Roseanne. I mean, just like really extraordinary classmates, Dermot Mulroney. Um, so it was like in this incubator of like really uh, gifted uh, peers. So that was really fun. Um, yeah, and I mean, just doing a variety of different shows. Uh, Northwestern did a really fun summer stock so we would do, uh, gosh, it felt like maybe a show a week or something. Um, but we did The Importance of Being Earnest, which was a favorite play. Um, golly, um, musicals. I did a lot of Gilbert and Sullivan um, at Northwestern, which is a genre I had not heard of before. And I kind of love Gilbert and Sullivan because it's it's not quite, you know, Puccini, uh, but it's not, you know, cabaret either. It kind of, <laughs> it's operetta. So I, I loved that. Yeah, absolutely. So have you been to the, have you ever, ever like gone back to, to Northwestern in like recent years and stuff? Have you kind of seen how it's like changed? Um, yes, we went maybe four years ago. It was just my husband and my daughter. My son was not able to join us. Um, and we heard a beautiful singer named Stacy Kent who was singing in a smaller venue in Evanston. But then I took uh, my husband and daughter on a tour of Northwestern and it was, it was wild. Uh, you know, the Bean and School of Music has built this amazing facility right on the water glass and these huge windows uh so that was pretty exciting to see uh but i remember going to lutkin hall which is a historic recital hall and i remember um, competing in this oratorio contest and you know as it happens sam sometimes with performers i'm singing this song in latin my pianist plays his wonderful introduction and this is the final round in Lutkin Hall and I'm there and I sing the first phrase and I just have a brain freeze, total brain freeze. But as poised as I could possibly be, I about walk back to the piano and I said, let's start again. 
and we started again and I got through it. Uh, but you know, you can't quite recover from a beginning like that. But it was fun to kind of recount that story and um, know that I survived and lived to tell about it uh, to my husband and my daughter because it was that same stage that I was telling them the story. Um, but it was great to be at Northwestern. It it looked uh, strangely the same and and yet fresh because of some of the new additions they've made. Um, but it was extraordinary. Yeah, of course. And and and, and you know, and and I and I just want to say this, you know, with the stuff that that you've done, you know, since since then, you, 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 you know, that they need they need to like 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 put you you and like I guess whatever like like alumni. Like 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 alumni museums, alumni displays. There there the there there they need to they need to like uh, like put some stuff with you up there because I mean I mean with all the stuff you've done since you know pretty amazing. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, honored to be part of that legacy for sure. Yeah yes, and 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 still such a again such a great school. You know very very prestigious and you know many many great people to to come out of there. So yes. Yes, um, you know, the beauty of it too, Sam, and maybe you were going to ask me this, but the fact that Northwestern was right there was such an asset. So I think it was my junior or senior year, a number of my peers were getting professional TV and film agents. And so I thought this might be a smart thing to do. So, I mean, I could take the L train uh, if I was willing to stand out in the cold and get to catch the train, which I was. Um, so I signed with an agent and I ended up uh, booking a national McDonald's commercial. And it was such a gift because uh, it got me my SAG card, my Screen Actors Guild card, which is the union, as you know. And that was a good thing to get even while I was in school because the graduating was so seamless uh, because these opportunities in the professional world had already started. So it was really helpful to have Chicago there. A number of my professors at Northwestern were also professional uh, theater directors. So I went on to do professional theater um, because hopefully because I did my work, my homework, uh, but because those directors were familiar with me from the school. So that was a gift. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and you know, and that just goes to show you how important, you know, it is, you know, to make those connections along the way yeah. and stuff, how, 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 when you make those connections, they oftentimes, you know, you know, they kind of end up, you know, working out and stuff and, you know, no, no, the end of paying dividends. Right. Absolutely. I agree. That's a very, um, I know later you may ask me about, you know, what I would suggest to younger actors and um, people, people that, you know, are really important. Yeah, yep, absolutely. 100 percent. It's funny because they even, you know, a lot of my professors in my journalism school, you know, no, no, they 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 say the same things like, like, hey, you know, so a lot of the times it's kind of about who you know and stuff. Right. Right. You gotta you gotta be ready when you show up, but um absolutely, absolutely. Yep. Yep. Definitely. Now I want to kind of, kind of get in out to, to like, like some, like some like roles you've done, you know, you know, some of your most memorable things that, that people, you know, kind of remember, you know, part perhaps seeing you on. Uh, and I want to kind of start off with, with something interesting and something, something that maybe, you know, some people might, might not know that you are part of this. Uh, th there was a syndicated uh, television beauty contest that you were on called dream girl USA. And uh, the episodes are on YouTube and stuff. Uh, but uh, what was that whole uh, experience like? Well, what's funny is uh, I did do Dream Girl USA. Prior to that, I did something called the Miss Hollywood Contest, which I think is out there in the universe as well. Um, that was a Dick Clark production. Uh, Dream Girl USA was emceed by uh, Ken Howard, who was a Northwestern grad and who was a lovely man. Um, so both of those shows were really done for the purpose of, you know, exposure. I've never been like a beauty queen girl. I've never uh, felt like I fit in that world. Um, and yet I recognized it as, you know, potential, uh, you know, exposure and in way to potentially win some money. So I remember Miss Hollywood, I won uh, a trip to Fiji, took my parents. And then uh, for Dream Girl, I think I won a car. And I already had a car, so I remember selling it, but that it was uh, it was helpful. Um, but I met actually some really extraordinary, you know, very gifted, talented ladies doing those doing those competitions. 
And the Miss Hollywood contest was a very intentional move on my part. Um, I was living in Chicago and I felt this itch to kind of spread my wings. And I thought it's either New York or LA. And I'd seen some of my peers do well in LA. Um, so I'd heard about the Miss Hollywood contest. I thought if I'm chosen as one of these 25 girls, I'll get to LA for two weeks. I'll get to meet uh, Dick Clark. Alan Thicke is emceeing the show. But more importantly, I will get to take a look around. <clears throat> so while I was there filming that show on their dime, I met uh, a number of agents and ended up signing who I ended up with this innovative artist who at the time was um, Harrison Goldberg. Great agency. So I signed with them for a year and came home and told my parents, um, I'm moving to Los Angeles. I just signed a year contract with Harrison Goldberg. And uh, that's what got me out there. Mm. And now, now moving to moving to Los Angeles, you, you know, just kind of what was that whole uh, what was that whole transition like for you? Well, you know, Chicago had been really good for me. Like I said, I was doing like professional theater and musicals in Chicago. But I also felt like, you know, a lot of these houses had their kind of regulars that they would use. So I felt like. I'm limited to how much I can grow here. So that's, again, was part of the reason of why I wanted to spread my wings. So I was very fortunate. I moved uh, into an apartment with a couple of gals that went to UCLA in Westwood, and they were fun. Um, but I, I mean, I, I was familiar with the sort of audition journey. So my first audition was for the A-team, and uh, I booked it. And I remember arriving on set. Now, under understand that like I'd done that National McDonald's commercial, but my wheelhouse was really theater. It was live performance. And so suddenly I'm uh, put in the make a trailer, get ready. And, uh, and then I'm on set and Mr. T is there with his gold chains and his mohawk, you know, kind as ever, but it was like one rehearsal, Sam. And then it was, you know, lights, camera, action, we're rolling. Um, so it was a lot to assimilate quickly. You know, now I feel that we've gotten so much smarter. There's so many film classes that you can take. But at that time, I was 23, 24, um, with very sort of little film on camera experience. Um, but anyways, A-Team was my first first audition. Yes. Well, wow. Well, well, that you know, that's a pretty that's a pretty, pretty big show to have your first audition for. I was I felt very fortunate that that, it, you know, things the ball started rolling pretty quickly. Um, my second audition was for a very big film that you mentioned, um, Tough Guys and Tough Guys Don't Dance. And that was quite a whirlwind. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And and I, and I was actually, I was just about to, to get, in, to, uh, get into that film. Um, you know, you know, so you start in this film, it was alongside Ryan O'Neill and directed by Norman Mailer. So, so I just have to ask, you know, working with those two, you know, what memories do you have from working on the film? What was the uh, what was the experience like on that movie? That's quite a chapter of my life. Um, it was extremely, um, it was an honor to work alongside some of these giants. I mean, and I remember, you know, really being dedicated to the audition process and and reading Norman's novel. And I love that it was based on this real person and she had a Southern accent and there was, it was a great challenge. Um, and I remember, you know, arriving and and this is a Francis Ford Coppola has his name on this thing. And, and Fair Fawcett is there our first night uh, for the welcome dinner. Uh, but it was, it was, um, so like artistically it was very challenging. Uh, there were some elements to that film that I regret. And, and Norman knows that and we had conversations about it. Um, but he was like a, a bit of a father figure at the same time. Um, I felt that he really believed in me and that meant a lot. And some of the things that he shared with me, I still remember, you know, he said, you're gonna have a long career. And, and I appreciated that. I think he thought, you know, I was a young sort of starlet, but he knew that, I think he could see that I was in this for the long haul. Um, he was, quite a character and I consider it an honor to have had that season to to work with him and with Ryan I remember I had a chemistry read with Ryan so I made it through the first round and then you have this chemistry read where I just see if you have chemistry and um 
so I like I'm in the room and I'm wearing a black pencil skirt and a teal silk blouse and I don't even remember them saying action and Ryan's just sort of sitting there and he just starts talking and he was so believable Sam that I didn't realize, oh, he started the scene, you know? He was, I thought, uh, oh, he's, we're, we're starting, okay? Because he was, he was so uh, authentic in it. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it was, it was really an honor. Um, Isabella Rossellini, I mean, are you kidding? I wish I could go back. Wish I could go back because there were some extraordinary people on that film. Frances Fisher was, she went, later did uh, Titanic and, uh, She's extraordinary. And then uh, if you watch Yellowstone, um, you know, Rip, uh, Cole Hauser has become such a household name for so many of us. Uh, but his father is Wings Hauser. And so Wings was in this film with me as well. And um, yeah, it was it was it was quite an experience. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I'm 24 and uh, it was a lot. Uh, this business is so funny because one day you'll wake up and you're working with these sort of giants and you're, you know, you've got the limousine and you've got this extraordinary, uh, you know, condo that they're putting you up in right there on the ocean. And then another day you're, you're in your basement cranking out another audition. Um, that's the reality of this industry, truly. <clears throat> Yeah, absolutely. You know, you're you know you're going through the through the kind of people that you're able to work with, and 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 it's it's interesting. This is something I I honestly did not even realize in, in, until recently, um, but I, I I realized that a pen from Penn and Teller is also in the movie, which is <laughs> something I thought was so cool. Right, right. Yes, they were they were great, and you know, quite the characters. Very talented guys. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just, just many, many great talents, you know, on that movie. Um, and, and I just have to say, you know, anytime I watch it, you, you just steal every single scene you're in. And, you know, I love the, the whole Southern accent you got going on. It's just, it, it's an amazing performance. And in my opinion, like, like, like you are the absolute standout in, in the movie. Anytime oh. I watch it. Thank you. Thank you, Sam. That means a lot. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, of course, and and, and you know it's uh, it's it's always it's always a fun watch, and then uh you know it's uh you know no the the movie you know it's kind of gotten this internet fame uh, on the internet be because of the uh the oh oh god oh man scene, so it's kind of you know it, it, it it's kind of internet famous, which is kind of cool too, and I think more people of this generation might be able to kind of be able to watch the movie just by seeing that one scene. That's so funny. I remember it It kind of jumps out at you, doesn't it, that line? Because you're not quite sure what to make of it. I'll never forget, you know, I don't want to give too much away, but I get decapitated in that film. Yeah. Yes, unfortunate. Um, but I remember they had to do like a cast of my head. And that's a whole experience. You can't be claustrophobic because they literally cover your entire head with just like two holes so you can breathe. Uh, my daughter recently had to do it and I was so proud of her because truly it's if you have any claustrophobic issues it's very scary yeah yeah yeah, yeah. I, I bet <laughs> yeah it's funny you bring that up because that's my that's my least favorite part you know because I remember getting towards the end I was I was I was, I was like come on they're good they're you, you know you know they're gonna kill off the best character oh thank you so, so, so yeah yeah so 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 from now on, I just kind of pause it, you know, right before that. Thank you, Sam. Keep me, keep her alive. Keep Patty going. Yes, yes, exactly. I agree. <laughs> uh, now, now I, I got to bring up this this other um, great role you had. You you were on a a little TV show called Moonlighting with uh, Bruce Willis. Yes. Able to able to work with him, which is so awesome. Um, and you know what was it like working on on that show? And I mean, you wore the most amazing fur coat, you know, on the show, which is you know, no, I'm not sure whatever happened to that fur coat, but it it's amazing. So you know, I regret that I could not convince my agents to write that into my contract because that fur coat was stunning. I think it was fox. It was kind of a creamy white, gorgeous. The dress I had was beautiful too. Um, Bruce was as charismatic. 
And as charming as you would suspect, he was engaged to Demi at the time, um, but he just made it so fun. Uh, I mean, he just kind of played himself, but he played it so well. That was such a really great show. The chemistry between he and Sybil was just the best. Yeah. But that was a fun, kind of a fun character, kind of coming in cognito to uh, get some information, using her feminine wiles to uh, get what she wanted. Yeah, that was fun. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and 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 I and I think think that you guys worked really well together. And 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 I remember remember watching. You know, no, 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 you guys have scenes and stuff. And I was just, I was just like, you know, no. How did you guys like 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 not do a movie together? Because I I think that would have been great. You and Bruce in a movie. Oh my gosh, that would have been awesome. But you know, you remember little things that people tell you, and I remember Bruce saying, um, "You should do films." He said, I remember him saying, you know, hold out, do films, you have a future. And so, I mean, that was, that was nice coming from a guy like him. Yeah. yeah. So I'm sorry, you know, is there, is there still time, Sam, for us to do a little film together? Yeah, 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 absolutely. Um, that would have been fun. Yes, for sure. Oh. Will die hard stuff kind of maybe I don't know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It, 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 yep, exactly. Do you, do you think Die Hard is a Christmas movie? Is it... Do I think Die Hard is a Christmas movie? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, maybe I don't know. We make it a Christmas movie. Maybe. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah, exactly. Um, let's see. So, so now let's get into to uh, your you know I think a role that that a lot of people uh, remember you from you know your role on Full House and stuff as a Cindy. Uh, how did so just first off how did that role kind of come about I mean because Full House was such a massive show in the 80s so how did that role uh, come about for you well you know if you have a good agent they're getting you good auditions right so they tell me that um, I've got this audition for Full House um, and she's got to be a mom she's divorced newly divorced and she has a son and uh, so I prepared my sides my script right and um, in real life, I'm actually engaged to my now husband. Uh, but anyways, I go to the audition and there's this young boy there in the audition room and they're pairing uh, us moms up with various sons uh, to go in and audition because they want us to audition together. So I meet this kid and I'm thinking, uh, I don't have a kid, but if I had a kid, he'd look like this. I remember thinking, oh, we're, we're good together. Uh, and he was fun. Uh, so anyways, I just remember going in the room and, and in those days, uh, you know, there's still some of this, Sam, but we do so much by video now. Um, but I love the fact that we were in the room with, you know, Jeff Franklin, as I recall, you know, with the team, with the casting director. Um, and I just remember feeling it was fun. It was fun. You know, I liked this boy, the, the son, um, but I just felt like the energy in the room was really good. Uh, and you know, Cindy was very much, I could bring really myself to her. Um, and I just remember walking out thinking, golly, that was really fun. You know, sometimes you walk out and up, up an audition and you think, oh, crushed it, crushed it. And then you don't get it. Sometimes you walk out and you're like, wow, what was, where was my head at? And you end up booking it. Um, so you're, you're, Radar is not always right, but in that case, I think it was because I walked out and I was just, when it's fun and when you're relaxed enough to have so much fun with the people in the room and you're taking direction and it feels just like good, you know, play, uh, then you know something's, something's there. And I don't even think there was a callback for it. So anyhow, um, Loved booking that show. Loved working with that team. Uh, I mean, Bob and Dave Coulier, it was like constant comedy with those two. They were lifelong friends. And so they would be constantly cracking each other up uh, along with the rest of us. Uh, but I love the schedule of a sitcom. You know, you have that table read on Monday. You're tweaking jokes Tuesday. Uh, and then it's like theater for me because you're blocking it on a real set that you're rehearsing. And then Friday, you've got a semblance of a live audience. And the little twins were darling. Uh, Mary-Kate and Ashley were darling. They were probably, I'm gonna say, probably four when I did the show. They had their little tutor. 
And I remember how we, how we would roll this. I, I think this is a little bit interesting is they were so young. So the rest of us would be performing the show in front of this live audience, you know, pretty much nonstop. But then we would stop the show uh, to get their lines. And they would do maybe nine, 10 takes right in a row. The, and the directors would make sure that they got it. And then we would move on. So it was it was a really a kind of a fun way to work. And then Friday night, you're you're done and you're going home. So it was it was really a great uh, schedule. Everybody was great. I mean, John Stamos, I remember meeting him and charming as ever. I remember him telling me that he felt like he was a nerd in high school. And I was like, don't buy that. But he told me that he was. He was a theater nerd. Um, but he was fun. Uh, for some reason, I feel like maybe he was dating Paula Abdul at the time. I don't know. <laughs> but um, everybody was great. Candace Cameron was fantastic. And what's fun is that um, I got to do an event at my sister's church with Candace uh, a number of years ago. And that was so fun because after so many years, so I've had that opportunity to kind of reconnect with her. And she was more of an adult and she's really become really a powerhouse and just a, a beautiful, well-rounded human being. Um, so anyways, I love doing that show. Bob, I mean, Bob was like everybody, America's dad. He was an absolute gentleman. Um, but just so much fun. I felt like we had a genuine fun chemistry for the role. So here's my, we have things we have in life, Sam, that we are glad we said yes to and things we wish we'd said no to. Um, to be honest, like Tough Guys was a great journey. I regret uh, that it got a little bit more uh, exposing, so to speak, than I really wanted it to. I didn't know about the nudity piece uh, before I took that role on. But in today's day, I think that we would be smarter, negotiate, you know, contracts would have been set up a little bit differently. Uh, but that's maybe a little bit of a regret. But another regret where I wish I had said yes, is that on, on Full House, they asked me to marry Bob Saget. They wanted me to be a series regular. I had done three episodes by now and they really liked Cindy and they really liked us together. So they were gonna have the whole wedding on the show. And I thought, this would be so fun. This is the perfect schedule. I love this cast. I love this character. And my agents talked me out of it. My agents thought I would get lost in the shuffle. They had bigger plans for me. And, uh, you know, I, they didn't know about Fuller House at that time, right? Um, so unfortunately, I let them convince me to say no. And I do kind of regret that. You know, I believe God is sovereign. And so... It wasn't in the cards, but that really actually would have been a good time. So do I regret not marrying Bob Saget? Yes, I do. I do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah I, gosh, I think, I, you know, I think it would have been really, really amazing if Cindy and Danny had stayed, uh, had stayed together and you could have, and you would have been like, like a permanent part of the cast. You know, I think that would have been amazing. I do too. I do too. <laughs> But it's all it's all good. It's all good. But yeah, what would it have been like? What would our wedding have been like? Would we have kids? I don't know. Yeah, yeah, you know, uh, you know. Honestly, when you think about it, that, that's kind of one of you know that that might be one of the great, I guess, sitcom of what ifs. Yeah. <laughs> right. 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 I really I loved doing that show because it was so much a part of so many young kids lives and so it's it's fun for me to be able to be out in the world and have people tell me about how much that show meant to them and the little moral lessons and you know even now that it's so easy to to have on and it's heartwarming and it's represents family and relationship and people doing life together yeah, absolutely. You know, it's you know, uh, you know, it, it, it's just it, it's a very very great just a wholesome show and stuff. And it, it, you know, it it's is. it's the kind of show the show that you can you know watch anytime and really just watch with anyone and get yep. enjoyment out of. Yep, I agree. I agree. Yep, yeah. I love the Secret Admirer episode where the love note is getting passed around, and you know, Kimmy thinks that Jesse is the hots for her. It's so funny. It's so funny. 
yeah yeah it's again such a legendary show and you know what i think would be awesome is is is, is that like 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 you know you mentioned full fuller house you know no no they 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 should uh they, they should bring it back for that then they, they, they need to have it come on for like a you know guest spot on uh on that show yes yes i would actually love to do candace cameron beret's uh podcast yeah, that that let's, that would be awesome. Yeah, tell him, let's manifest that. Yeah, absolutely. That that would I would I would love that. That would be. I, a, would, too. I would too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That 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 would be a that would be an instant listen. You know, you know, for me, I you know, if I got the notification, that would be probably the I'd be like, oh, <laughs> I have to listen to this. That's great. So, um, and and and, and I mean, I, I I'm sure that you know, obviously, you met, you've been we've been talking kind of about your theater background and stuff and, and you know and, and i'm sure that you know when you're working on these sitcoms it's uh in, you know it's it, it can be kind of similar i guess with the with the element of, the element of having the live studio audience and stuff you know I, I know i imagine it's it's somewhat like you know doing your theater performances absolutely absolutely and i truly kind of loved it for that um and also there's a sense of um you know, if you work in a film, you're working at potentially three in the morning and you're working till you get it. And that's OK. You know, there's a beauty in as many takes as you need sometimes. Right. Um, but there's also something really wonderful about being prepared, coming to set, performing it, getting that instant feedback from the audience. There's a chemistry. There's, you know, there's a magic that happens on stage that that you as a performer, you tangibly feel it when you when when, when people are with you. It's an extraordinary feeling. And, and I do a little bit of public speaking and I feel that same energy when you know that they're with you and what you're communicating is actually translating. It's, it's, a, it's a really fulfilling uh, feeling. <laughs> yeah, yep, yep. I 100% agree. And, and, and I think, you know, the great thing is, is that, you know, when you're out there performing you know in theater or on a sitcom or whatever you know you're able to kind of feed off the energy of the audience you, you know now and kind of kind of betters your your uh, performance yes absolutely absolutely you know you nailed it yes yeah and, and you know and kind of from there i want to bring up this uh, this other sitcom role you had a uh, you had a guest spot on a on a little known fox sitcom called open house and I think it's really cool that you got to work with a young Ellen DeGeneres. Like, like, like who, 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 who would have thought, you know, know what she would do? Sam, I mean, again, another opportunity where I should have been a little more alert to say, I get to know this person. Um, but I have a very clear remembrance um, of, yes, our time on the show, but actually walking to the cafeteria together to have lunch. Uh, because, you know, you rehearse on set and then you're in the studio lot. So you're walking to this other area to have lunch. And um, I remember walking with her. And I remember just genuinely, you know, sometimes in the world of film, people mm, can feel like th they have sort of airs or something. Uh, she was so stinking, like, genuine and fun and authentic even then, which is not a surprise. Um and witty, <laughs> you know, no surprise there. Uh, so I just remember getting to know her a little bit on our walk to lunch, thinking, she's so cool. I like her. Yeah. Amazing to see, you know, where she's come. It's awesome. Yeah, 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 absolutely. And, and uh, you know, that's, you know, no, that, no, it's funny because this, this guest spot, you know, it's, a, it's just, it's a, it's a role that you absolutely nail and it's just it, it, it's a lot of fun and you know I, I love your whole your whole character in this you're, you know you're 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 kind of you're really good good in this role I kind of playing the 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 bad girl who's who's tr trying to get with the try, trying to get with the with the uh the rich boss on the show and it's uh it's it, it's a lot of fun I, I can tell you're having a blast on it oh good a little bit of a gold trigger issue yeah yep I need to, I need to pull that back up. I need to pull that. Nobody knows that show. I need to pull it back up. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I, I found it on a, yeah, I just kind of looked it up on YouTube and it just came up. That's, I'll tell you, that's the beauty about the, the YouTube. I think it's the closest thing we have 
to uh to to pretty much like a time mach time machine or or a time capsule. I think it's probably the closest thing we have. I think you're right. I think you're right. It's pretty cool. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, right, well, it's hard me to look it up again. Yes, yes, for sure. Um, now, now the so you know, no, um, so you and your family, you know, you guys ended up moving to Atlanta and stuff. Um, so what, you know, what have been the best parts about living there? You know, just how was the move? You know, how, you know, what was that transition like going to Atlanta? You know, I think there's something happens, Sam, when you become a parent, your priorities have a way of shifting. And so we'd been in LA, we'd been married for about two years. Our daughter was two. And I was continuing to work, but also, again, like I said, my priorities, there sort of felt like a shift. And I was getting a little bit frustrated with the industry, honestly. And so my sister-in-law was visiting. Uh, she did often. And there was a night that my husband and my sister-in-law, they're brainstorming about this business idea. <laughs> Greg goes to bed and I look at her and I say, you guys are going to do this, aren't you? She said, I think so. <laughs> so anyways, long story short, uh, his whole family had migrated to Atlanta and then he wanted to start this business with his sister. Um, and again, I think because Sarah was such a, a force in our life, our daughter, and we didn't know that we wanted to send her to public school. And we just, I think, wanted to be around family. Uh, and so we decided to move to Atlanta. And I remember at the time, not really being sure. I did sort of feel like I was sort of giving up on my dream a little bit, to be honest. Uh, but there was a little bit of a nudge I received, I think, from my creator. It was the night before I was to get on the plane. And literally, there was an earthquake. There was an earthquake that shook our little house like nobody's business. And I was like, OK, I'm ready. I mean, it was terrifying. So we arrive in Atlanta. And um, it, it, it was not a quick adjustment to be honest um because the, the work here was so different so I was happy to like get invested in what my daughter was doing and I did you know I got involved in her school and I helped with the arts festivals and wrote some sketches for you know the school we we formed a little drama troupe with her and her friends and my son was in it as well um but the kind of jobs that were here for actors were really like industrial films. So I got an agent when we moved here, but I was doing like, you know, the Carol Merrill, uh, you know, that that's all that was here and I wanted to work. Uh, so I would do industrial films. Um, and so that was, you know, it paid and it kept my foot in the door, but it wasn't like it is today that the, inter the entertainment industry is so alive and well in Atlanta now. And I literally feel like, God brought the industry here for me because there's so much going on. But at the same time, and I will, I think this is one of your questions. The quality of life that you can have in Atlanta is, is pretty sweet. It's pretty sweet. Uh, it's not about stuff, but I, I have to admit that when we moved here, suddenly we had twice the amount of square footage that we did in Los Angeles. Um, and traffic was not near as bad. And there were trees and there were seasons and there was family. So a lot of that was good. It's been really good. Uh, you know, Tyler Perry has a 330 acre studio here that is absolutely epic. Um, I have booked really big films from Atlanta. Uh, you know, I feel like I was here as the things started to grow. So like I said, my first jobs here in the industry were more like industrial films or live industrial shows. Uh, but then eventually uh, I booked an episode of Army Wives and then something called Cape Fear down in Florida. And things just sort of began to change. And now here we are. Atlanta is cooking with gas. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you, you know, I can't tell you how many times I, I watch a movie today and then at the end of the movie, you know, there's like the Georgia logo. Wow. Yes. Yes. I love that. I love seeing that. Yeah. 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 So, 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 so I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure I, I know the answer, but, 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 uh, but would you, would you say that the, 
you know, kind of looking back that the move was a, was a good one? I would, I would. Um, it was a hard one. It was a hard one because I really wasn't sure the industry would ever be in my life again. And so it was a lot to sort of give up. Um, but I also am really thankful because I felt like I had a really rich season raising my kids. I kept my foot in it, but I was also really being able to be a present mother. And that has been my favorite role of my life. Hey, hey, hey. That, that's awesome. You know, no, that, that, no, that is, that's awesome. And, you know, and, and, you know, in a little bit, you know, you know, no, we'll get to this, you know, to, to, to the great stuff that you're doing, you know, with your daughter, you know, and stuff. And, and I think it's amazing that you've been able to work with her on this stuff. So, so let's just kind of get into, you know, that, how did, uh, uh, now, how did Stipe Studio come to be? Where, where, where did the idea come, come from? You know, when did it all start for that? Well, you know, I think, I hope in some ways that my kids, kind of grew up a little bit like I did, uh, that playing make-believe was a really good time. And it wasn't anything that I forced on them. I just, you know, we loved reading books out loud and crafting stories. And like my daughter was really into American Girl dolls. And so we like made up an American Girl doll play and we had her friends over and like put on the show. Um, so they had a very, I think, creative childhood, but it wasn't anything I forced on them. Uh, and again, our son is a really wonderful actor. He's not working in that, that field right now, but he's a very fine actor. But so when Sarah was 10 and Walker's, sorry, when Walker's 10, our son, and Sarah's 12, uh, Sarah wants to put on a show with the neighbor kids. And uh, she says, mom, let's, uh, let's do this, uh, The Wizard of Oz. And let's uh, make up flyers. We'll put them in our mailbox, the mailboxes of our neighbors, and uh, we'll cast the show and we'll do it at our house. And I'm going to direct it. So, so my daughter didn't even want to be in it. She wanted to direct it. So I said, "Great, I will be your assistant director." And so we made up the flyers. We put them out, and we got like I don't know. I think maybe 20 kids from the neighborhood to do the Wizard of Oz. And so right there, it's in the living room or is the audience. And then we had kind of a, a big sort of lobby in our house, like a foyer, I guess they call it, with the staircase and then above balcony, which was perfect. So we did the show here, but then like the flying monkeys came down the stairs from the, you know, at, from the balcony, so to speak. And um, anyways, we put on what was the beginning of, at that time, we called it the Seven Dwarf Playhouse, where little people learn and laugh a lot. The Seven Dwarf Playhouse, she named it. Um, so she had this little entrepreneurial spirit, Sarah did, uh, to direct and also to start this little business. So the next summer we did another show and we charged the students to be in it um, because we would do it together and we would you know, audition the kids. And the beauty of it too, Sam, is that we would do a show in a week. Now I know that sounds crazy, but kids have these little brains that can learn quickly. Uh, we would give them the scripts beforehand. So Monday we would start hard and by Friday, those kids would be off book. We would always keep the set very simple um, and we would costume as best we could, but there was always a Friday performance. So it was a one week uh, run of camp. And so this just grew. So every summer we would do these shows, but we would do like multiple weeks. So maybe we would do three weeks of Annie or we would do three weeks of Little Mermaid. And eventually we were doing it uh, in our local high school. Um, one summer we did a high school musical. We had 65 kids in the show, but my daughter's skills to direct um, and really entrepreneurial spirit uh, was so cultivated in that arena. Um, and I remember just thinking, I don't even need to be here anymore, you know? Um, she went off to college, but she would come home and we would continue to do it during the summer. Uh, she and I, you know, are a little bit like, you know, Bonnie and Clyde, I think. Um, when she went off to college, that was so sort of sad. She went to Pace University in New York. But as I'm sitting there at the airport with tears in my eyes, I literally got a call from a performing arts school asking me if I wanted to uh, teach some and coach. And I said, uh, yeah, yeah, this would be good for me. 
And so I started teaching privately and doing some teaching in smaller classes. And I really loved it. So it became uh, really an impetus for me to like continue to grow. And then when she graduated from college, uh, this sort of footprint of the studio was already in place. So at some point we became, we went from being called the Seven Dwarf Playhouse uh, to the Stipe, stu to Stipe Studio. And we really uh, have been instrumental. I, I feel very grateful for this. Uh, instrumental in helping young actors uh, secure professional talent agents and then going on to book professional films or roles on TV shows. Uh, that's a really fun journey. Not every kid is meant for it, but when they are, are spot it and you can help guide them, that's a that's a journey worth taking. That's been a privilege to do. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I think it's amazing what you're doing. And I think I think it's great that they are able to kind of to pass on what you've learned throughout your career, throughout your career, pass on your wisdom, you know, to, to the kind of the next generation and stuff and, and help them out. And I, and I just think that's, you know, that's really amazing. It's amazing thank what you're doing. Thank you. You know, one of the things we did at the studio was we crafted our own sitcom. You know, one of the gaps we felt like the kids didn't get is remember when I talked about the A team and suddenly I'm on set mm -hmm. and uh, you know, my background was really theater. Uh, these kids want to get into TV film, but how do they get the experience, right? So we crafted a show called Life at Stipe because when the kids came to the studio, they would call it, I got Stipe. What are you doing after school today? I got Stipe. So we called it Life at Stipe. And it was really the, the premise of the show is a mother and daughter duo uh, really uh, making kids' dreams come true and a few of their own. So it's really kind of life, you know, art reflecting life because it was a show about a mother and daughter team that's helping kids uh, pursue their dreams. So we shot four episodes and it was really great because the kids got to be in a sitcom. And so we had a video, you know, uh, a DP, a photographer, and we had, uh, you know, somebody running sound and some of the kids would work crew as well. So they're learning different aspects of the industry as we're creating this series. So I believe it's out there on YouTube. Uh, it's called Life at Stipe. Uh, and so my daughter and I basically play ourselves and all our students um, do a great job in it. It's a, it's, it's a fun, it's a fun series. Yeah, absolutely. It's fu funny because, uh, because it's the uh, last night, uh, you know, I, I, I did find it, I, as you said, on YouTube and I watched, uh, I watched the first episode. It was, uh, <laughs> Yeah, yeah I did. Oh, it was, it, 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 it's a lot of fun. You know, I know it, it, it's it, it's real, real, really fun. Just, just a really enjoyable watch. And, you know, and, you know, what, what I really liked about watching it was was, you know, I could tell that that that, that all all of your students, you know, have, you know, know, just serious acting chops. And I remember watching it. I, I was I was like, man, these kids are really good. And, you know, um, but but then I realized like, like oh, well, well, they have a freaking awesome teacher. So it makes sense. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, we had a lot of fun. You know, we had, we kind of heightened our personas. Um, but yeah, it was a lot of fun. We were very blessed with a lot of talent. And a lot of those students are still working in some capacity in the industry. Yeah. And, and I just think, again, again I think it, it's great, you know, 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 know that you were able to, that you made this great opportunity to, to, you know, you know, kind of help your students get involved in stuff and and get them more experience. You know, I, I know I think that's really great. You know, you know that you've uh, you know that you've done that and stuff. Thank you. You know, it was also just an opportunity uh, to write something original and to have sort of the um, creative control, shall we say, to write what you want to write, tell the story that you want to tell. To do that with my daughter, uh, to know the students, so to know. Uh, what would work and what would really add. You know, sometimes an actor comes in a room, audition room, and they bring something to a character that you never thought of. But if you know that actor and you know their sweet spot, you can like write to it. Uh, so we did do a little bit of that. And that was fun. That was fun. And yeah. it also, you know, it gave my, my daughter an opportunity to write, which is something she's very good at. Um, but it gave her an opportunity to really cultivate that gift of hers. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you, you know, no, 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 throughout this whole thing, you know, no, that you're doing, you're able to work with your daughter. And, and I think that's a really special thing, 
you know, you know, what does it mean to you, you, you know, as a mother to be able to do that, you know, with your daughter? Where do I start, Sam? I, I so believe in that kid. Um, it's a joy. It's a joy. There's also, if a, it's a funny thing because like sometimes if she's around and my husband's around, we'll sort of click, click into, uh, you know, the, the biz conversations, you know, because we do, we just genuinely enjoy it and, and like to talk about it. Um, but it can be a little bit ostracizing for those that maybe aren't in the business. Um, so we have to catch ourselves. But we enjoy all sorts of things, not just talking about the business, but it's genuinely a great connect point for she and I. So it's it's a gift and a blessing to be able to share it with her and to see her grow as an artist. Um, she, you know, I see some of myself in her, but I also see so much more sort of leadership in her and courage in ways uh, that I didn't, you know, taking courageous steps that maybe I didn't take. Um, so it's a, it's an awesome thing to behold. I also, as a, as a mother, I always want to be also careful of like giving her plenty of space. Um, you know, as a parent, you're always kind of, you're, you're, you have to dance carefully, um, knowing when your when your help uh, is helpful, <laughs> and when your help is is not, and when to step away, and when to give somebody room to grow and have their own journey, and um, so we still work together some, but we pivoted during COVID. Our studio, uh, we realized having classes with thirty five students online was uh, just not uh, our jam, and wasn't best for the students. So we we decided to pivot. She moved to the city. Um, and so now we kind of run our studios independently, but there are times that we may uh, create together. And that's just kind of, that's kind of the best of all worlds because uh, when something is comes up, then we have opportunity to work together. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, I you know, I, I think that's kind of, that's kind of, a, it's kind of, kind of a great way of kind of, kind of going, going out about things, you know, working things out and whatnot. Yeah. You know, I, I think it's pretty, pretty yeah, swell. Yeah, we, well, funny enough, she and I booked a film separately, all right? She was the uh, the lead's best friend, and I was cast as the fashionista housewife uh, boutique owner, Lillian Lee. So they, they cast the film, and then they realize, oh, these two characters have scenes together, and gosh, they look similar and have similar characteristics. So long story short, they decided that they would make us mother-daughter in the movie, even though it was not written that way. So how fun was that? That was fun. Oh, wow. Wow. That, that, you know, no, that, that's what, that's one of those crazy occurrences, right? Right. So crazy. <laughs> so crazy. So fun. Yeah. Yeah. It's, you know, no, it's, it's crazy. Cra it's honestly crazy how, so sometimes, you know, those things happen, right? Right. How it just kind of comes out of nowhere and it's, it's like, oh, well, like, 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 look at this, look what happens. It's just right, right. the way things work out. I know. It's a really darling film. It's called Divine Influencer. It's on Pure Flix. So it's a kind of a faith-based film, but it's number one on Pure Flix right now. And uh, the lead girl is from The Chosen. And uh, it's a beautiful, darling, kind of romantic comedy. I'm so proud to see. Uh, I feel like that faith-based genre uh, needs some uh, projects that are just really fun and engaging. And I feel like Divine Influencer is that. It's a great team. Uh, yeah, 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 absolutely. Um, you, you know, and you know, and I kind of want to, I kind of want to dive into that now because, uh, you know, you've talked about, you know, how important your, you know, your faith has been, you know, and that stuff. Now, important your faith is to you. I, you know, I just kind of want to know just how important has your faith been throughout your life and uh, your career. You know, where do I start, Sam? I, I grew up in the church. And there's no perfect church, but it was a pretty great church. And when I was 10, the the leader of our little kids club called Awana, you know, we would play like dodgeball and we do crafts, but then there was always a story time. And she talked about this uh, tender shepherd, Jesus. And, and I remember being so taken with the story. And so I became a Christian. I invited Jesus into my heart. That's like how I understood it. But 
I think as you get through life, you, you, you're challenged with life. Like, is this faith really like mine? Is it my parents or what do I believe? And that's something I would really encourage actors or anybody in life, um, owning what it is you believe and owning your faith, whatever that is, and let it uh, rule you. And for me, there's an innate sense that uh, that God is real. And so I try to live by that. And I, I also believe that I'm the recipient of what he's given me. Like anything that I have, anything I have, whether it's my kids or my house or my voice, he gave it to me. And so I feel to some degree, an obligation. Uh, how can I use that for good, right? Uh, this is my one and only life. And how can I be a blessing to other people and uh, maybe point them to somebody beyond themselves? Because I think it's a tough industry. You can get, you, your identity can get very lost in the pursuit of fame and making it. And when you have that rudder, that grounding, that true north, of where you're going after this and who put you here and what he designed you for, it's very life-changing. And it's also to me, very freeing, right? I mean, I am by nature a bit of a people pleaser, but if I can remember at the end of the day, no, I'm really actually only called to be pleasing one. That is uh, very freeing and very stabilizing. And um, very uh, grounded. So I hope that's helpful. Yeah, 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 yeah. You, you know that's uh, you know that's uh, that that that's really you know powerful, uh, really powerful to hear about. You, you know and stuff. And you know what's it you know what's it like now? Now you know. And I know you mentioned you know your you know that movie, a divine influencer. You, you know, know what you know are you know are you looking to maybe go into you know pop you no know, pop you no know, possibly uh, you know more you know faith faith based films. In the future and stuff and, and just kind of you know, you know what does it mean to you to kind of to uh to be in those you know in those films you know with that that have that uh you know the faith-based um you know messages and stuff i'm very careful i really care about the story i really care about the message and i really want films or television whatever it is whatever story you're telling you want it to be authentic um and so I feel like Christendom, Christian faith-based films, I feel like we're getting better. Uh, I want to be obviously part of projects that are done well, but I also really care about the message. And if you can like bring your craft to a good message, that's exciting for me because you you believe in the story you're telling. You know, some are just fun, like some you tell and they're it's just entertaining. You're not necessarily aiming to bring something really lofty, but it's exciting for me to see things like The Chosen, which I think is well done. Um, and I think Divine Influencer is well done. Uh, but I think like there's a film called Surprised by Oxford, which is based on a really wonderful book. And it's well done, but it's not in your face. It's not, um, I don't think, pushy. So I'm just, a, a, I really want to tell good stories. Um, I don't want to limit myself. And so there's a part of me that has a little bit of a trepidation of saying, I want to do faith-based because I don't want to only do faith-based um, because I think there's a lot of amazing stories to be told. Uh, but does it excite me to be part of a project that has a meaningful message? You better believe it. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, well. Uh, you know, no, that's you know, it's really great to hear uh, and stuff. And I think you know, and and you know, you know, you know, it's it's honestly, you know, what I what I like about about what you just said and stuff is you know, you talk about you know, just the importance of a the importance of a good story and stuff. You know, you know, and that's you know, that's and and it's you know, you know, I think I think you know, at the at the heart of part the heart of any movie or TV show or or any sort of, you know, project, you know, that's, that's, you know, you know, that should be at the heart of it, right? You know, you know, no, 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 a really good, uh, you know, meaningful story that can, uh, you know, that can, that can really captivate the audience, you know, and, 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I don't, I don't feel the need to always, you know, play the good girl. Um, I've played plenty of bad girls, <laughs> but, but that's real. I remember Norman Mailer saying, um, I just, he, he appreciated the fact that I was a person of principles, but yet understood that like, this is a character, these people exist. And even like that sort of darkness is in us. Um, so as an actor, you have to be willing, um, you know, you're telling the story. You know, if you're gonna tell the story of uh, the demon possessed guy, or you're telling the story of Bathsheba, you know, somebody has to, somebody has to play Bathsheba. I don't need to see it all. I don't need to see it all, but somebody has got to play her. Make sense? Yeah. And, and, and I think, you know, and, and I think that's something that you've done a really good job on, you know, in your career is, is, is you've had, you know, such a variety, you know, of roles and stuff. You played this great variety of characters, you know, very different characters, you know, from project to project. And I think that's something so great, you know, about, about your career and what you've done in it and stuff is, is that, that you, is that you've, you know, you've had a wide range of characters to play. I thank you. I, I take that as a compliment because I really enjoy that. I really enjoy the range. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Uh, so, so kind of, kind of my last, uh, you know, my, no, my last big question here and stuff. It's, uh, you know, no, no, no. And I, th I think you kind of, you know, you know, you were kind of mentioning this earlier, you know, you know, we kind of talked about it a little bit. Um, but you no, know, just what would you say, you know, you no, know, for you, you know, what's the biggest piece of advice, you know, that you have for anyone who's looking to get into acting? I'm so glad you asked this, Sam, because I actually gave it a little bit of thought. And I think it's really important. Uh, I have a couple of things. One is, it is an art, but it is a business. And I think if you're going to go into it, you need to understand that. Uh, because a big piece of it is, yes, knowing your craft and being good at your craft. But you also have to understand that second piece, the business piece, is you've got to be able to sell yourself, present your materials, you know, uh, get after it, stay after it, um, you know, the relationships, the networking. You've got to understand that all of that is a big piece of it too. And if you don't have the stomach for that, uh, it can be tough. Another thing I would say is become more valuable. And that's a very general phrase, but I, I mean it in any way you want to take it become more valuable so that any director wants you in their project. And how do you become more valuable? It might be that you take that improv class. It might be that you um, are an incredible team player and you just have this way about you when you're on a set that you just like encourage everybody. Uh, it might be that you actually also know how to um, write. You know, it could be anything, but become more valuable so that they want you as part of the team. And then I also would say, this is something that I really wish that I'd done a better job of myself. See your vision. Who are the people that you really want to work with? What are you aiming towards? You know, I remember thinking, I just want to work. I just want to work. Well, no. What about like, who do you specifically want to work with? Who do you want to tell stories with? What kind of community of creatives do you want to be creating with? Um, my daughter's doing a really good job of this right now, I think. Uh, but see your vision. Where are you really going? And pursue those people that you really want to work with. And lastly, I'm getting a little long-winded, but understanding that you are a piece of the pie. You're a piece of the pie. You are not the pie. <laughs> You're a piece of the pie. So when I make a peach pie, there's the crust, there's the peaches. Uh, I might put in a little bit of ginger because it adds a little zest. All There's so many elements to the storytelling process. And sometimes we as actors, we can kind of think, I'm coming in, I'm telling my piece, I am the pizza delivery boy, and it's all about me. Now, you're part of a story. How does your piece fit into the whole story? And also understand that you're part of this big wheel. You are a cog in this big wheel. And there's so many elements that need to be performed well. You are so much part of a team. Uh, and time is money. So just bring in your piece of the pie and do it to the best of your ability. And the pie will be delicious. Uh, you, you know, no, that is some fantastic, fantastic advice. And and, and I, I really like the pie thing that he came up with. 
That's genius. Like that? <laughs> well, well, we like peach pie around here. Um, my mother-in-law literally taught me how to make peach pie because she knew that it was sort of a prerequisite to marry my husband. So peach pie. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. You, you know, no, uh, you know, no, I know, I know d down in, uh, down in Georgia, you know, no, you guys love, you guys love your peaches. So we love our peaches. We love our peaches. That's right. Keep yep. Peach. Yep. Ab <laughs> absolutely. And stuff. Um, but, but, but seriously, uh, Deborah, thank you so much for, uh, you know, letting me talk with you today. You know, no, it's not often, you know, that, that I'm able to, to, you know, to, to like talk to someone who's had, you know, just, just such an, an amazing, amazing career, you know, no, as you have, you know, it's just, it's truly, truly an honor, honestly. Thank you. Well, you have a very bright mind, but also a very encouraging spirit, Sam. And uh, it's been an honor to sit down with you and I really appreciate it.